Good afternoon. My name is Rakesha Chase Jackson, and this is um, our webinar focused on Composer 2, which is our online radio schedule and playlist management tool. So today we're going to talk about how to create and manage your program guides and playlists in Composer 2. On our agenda for today's call, first we're going to do a quick introduction to Composer 2, and then we're going to talk about creating your users. Then we're going to focus on managing your program guide and how to manually um, create playlists in Composer 2. And then we're going to talk about um, importing and exporting your playlist and then finish up by talking about Composer 2 widgets. So to start, let's do a quick walkthrough of Composer 2 and also talk about how to create users. To start, there's some vocabulary that's a little different from um, Composer Pro for any stations on this call or listening to this webinar who uh, were once using Composer Pro. So we're going to start by just going over some of the vocabulary that we're going to be talking about on today's call. The first term is calendar. So your calendar is basically your program guide or your program grid. It is that traditional um, grid that you're used to seeing that would display your weekly program schedule. The next term is episodes. So an episode is a new idea for Composer 2. It is an instance or an airing of a program. So you may have a program like All Things Considered, for example, which airs every day. Um, so the July 16th episode or the March 22nd, um, 22nd episode of All Things Considered, that would be a specific instance or airing of a program. The next term is widgets. So just like everywhere else on the internet, um, a widget is a tool that is used to display um, information. In this case, for Composer 2, it's for um, your program grid or your playlist. So we use widgets in the same way as other um, sites use widgets. We just allow you to, um, we created these widgets to allow you to embed Com Composer 2 content into your website. The next term is airtime. So an airtime are the days and times that a program airs at your station. So you could have a program like Morning Edition that airs every day from, you know, maybe 5 to 7 a.m., for example, or maybe you have Classical 24 and you air from midnight to 5 a.m., something like that. That's the airtime for a program. And we also want to note that programs can have multiple air times. So you may have a program that you air from Mon on Monday, some Monday to Friday from noon to one, and then on weekends maybe you air it from three to four. So you can add multiple air times for a program. The next term is playlist. So a playlist is also known as a song list. It's basically just all of the songs that were played during a specific um, episode of a program. And then the last term is break. So the break is also a new function for Composer 2. And the break is a duration in time in your playlist that no songs are being played. So this is specifically for your music programs. If you're creating a playlist and your host, for example, takes five minutes at the beginning of the show to, you know, welcome listeners and talk about some local news, then that would be considered a break in the program. It would be considered a break in the playlist. All right, so now that we've familiarized ourselves with some of the new terms that we're going to be talking about, let's jump in. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a user in Composer 2. So for folks on they're listening to this webinar that were once using Composer Pro, you'll remember um, that each station had their own login. So when they when you went to log into Composer Pro or Composer Basic, you had like a public broadcasting.net slash your call letters slash guide dot guide admin URL that you would go to and each station had one of those. In Composer 2, things are very different. Um, actually, all stations log in at the same place. So the URL that you'll want to make sure to bookmark is composer.nprstations.org. That is where your web visitors, and I'm sorry, that's where you're going to go to log in to Composer 2. 
And when you log in, you'll see that the entire Composer 2 admin is based around that program grid. That is where all of the action happens. And so all of the rest of the tools are built around that. So when you log into Composer 2 at composer.mprstations.org, the first thing that you're going to always see is this program grid. But there are some admin tasks, some links to different admin tasks as well. Um, you've got this larger bar here, and there are three options. You've got calendar, programs, and episodes. So the calendar is going to be a quick link to that program grid that you see here. So if you're ever on any of the interior pages of Composer 2 and you want to get back to the grid, you can always click on calendar to do so. The next link is Programs. Programs gives you a quick list of all of the programs that you've created, all of the programs that are currently still um, airing, and all of the ones that you've also ended. And then the last link is Episodes. So Episodes gives you a quick list to all of the different air times of your program um, for a specific day. There are also some more admin level tasks that are at the very top. Um, the first is import export. So this is where you're going to go if you ever want to import playlists from another tool like Spinatron or Music Master into Composer 2. Um, or if you need to export your playlist for reporting reasons, um, you would go to this import export link here. The next link is widgets. We're going to talk more about this today as well, but this is where you're going to go to access any of those customizable widgets that you can then add to your site. The next link is our support link. This just links to our regular um, NPR digital services support at um, nprsupport.desk.com. So this is just a link to um, where you would go if you ever need to submit a support ticket about Composer 2 or if you ever just wanted to get some help, like see our help documentation. The next link is settings. Um, this is where you're going to go to create users and affiliate links. And then the last URL is, I mean, the last link is just to log out. If you ever want to log out of Composer 2, you would do so here. But when we were talking about settings, there were two things that we noted, and that was users and your affiliate links. Um, affiliate links is an idea that did exist in Composer Pro. Um, if you had a relationship with Amazon, iTunes, or Archive, which is specifically for classical music, um, you could you would have an affiliate code that you could then plug into Composer Pro at the time of Composer 2 now. And what it'll do is it'll add links, like buy links for each song that you add to a playlist. So if you ever want to um, create an affiliate, definitely make sure to contact someone um, on our station relations team. We'd be help, happy to help you get set up. But once you have your affiliate code, you're going to click on settings and then affiliate codes. And then you have space for iTunes, Amazon and archive. And like we said, the benefit of having an affiliate link is that it adds these Amazon and iTunes and again, archive for classical music links under every song that you add to a playlist. Um, so if someone is, for example, they're on this playlist and they really love this song, I'm the Man Who Loves You uh, by Wilco, and they want to buy that song on Amazon or iTunes for their phone or their media player, they can do that. They can click on this link. It'll immediately take them to a page to allow them to purchase the song. And part of the money that they spend on that purchase is actually going to go back to your station. So it's a great way to not only connect your web visitors with your content but also to add a little extra um, a little extra income financial support for your station so one of the first things that you're going to want to do as you are um, getting set up with Composer 2 is to create new users. And you're going to be creating users for anyone at your station who is going to need to be able to edit or create programs and also um, edit and manage your playlist. So um, your program director, your song host, any interns or volunteers who input playlist information, you'll wanna make sure that they have accounts in Composer 2. To create a new account, you're going to go to um, Settings and then select Users. And then you'll see there's an option, that's a button that says New User. You're going to click on that to create a user. 
And as soon as you do that, you're going to get a little pop up that's going to come up. Um, and please note that all fields are required to create a new user. The first thing you're going to do is enter a username. Um, please again note that um, your usernames cannot contain spaces. So you could have like, for example, Rakesha.chase or rchase, but you couldn't have Rakesha space chase. Like you'd have to, you know, put an underscore or a dash or a period or something like that. Um, you're then going to enter the email address and then you're going to enter a password for that user and then confirm it. And then you have this role section here. Um, and you have two roles, host and station admin. All of your, your host, your program DJs, your interns, your volunteers, all of those folks, you're most commonly going to give them the host user role. Um, this limits the amount of admin level things that they can do in Composer 2. Um, and it also allows, it, so basically it just locks down the number of options they have. The station admin role is a bit more open, so you may have like yourself or your program director, maybe your web person might have um, admin status. You then have the stream access section. This is really important, especially if you have hosts um, and volunteers that are um, assigned to one specific program. So they'd only be logging into Composer 2 to edit um, or add playlists for one or maybe two programs. You're going to limit the number of programs they have access to under stream name. I'm sorry, stream access. Uh, under stream name, you're going to select your stream if you have multiple streams, like an HD1 and an HD2 that are all in Composer 2, you're going to select that from the drop down. And then you're going to select the program that you want to give your host access to. If you want to give them access to more than one program, maybe they are the host for your weekend classical program, but they also sometimes sit in um, and, and do like your replacement hosting during weekdays if someone's out, then you'd want to give them access to both programs. Um, to do so, you're going to select add another stream. And then once you're all set, you're going to hit save changes and that will save your new user. All right, so that is um, creating users in Composer 2. Next up, we're going to talk about how to create programs, so managing your program guide in Composer 2. Um, um, if you are a station that was once using Composer Pro or Composer Basic, you'll remember that it was a two-step process to get to the Add Program screen. You would go to you know, Create Edit Program Guide, and then you'd um, be shown your grid. You'd hit the plus sign for the specific program uh, space that you wanted to add a program for. Try to make things a little bit more streamlined in Composer 2 is only an easy one-click path to add a program. There's actually um, a button at the very top when you're on when you first log in that is that says add program, and that's where you're going to go to create new programs. And you'll notice when you go to the add program or program details page that it's separated into two sections. You've got program details and airtime. So I'm actually going to hop out of our slides and into our test site so that we can build um, a test program together. All right, give me one second to get set up. All right, so, if, so right now we're on our test site. If I ever wanted to create a new program, I'm going to select Add Program here. You notice when you roll over the button, it turns blue. And this is going to take me to my program details page. The first thing I'm going to do is enter the name of my program. So let's just call this program lunchtime mix. If this was a syndicated program, like for example, if this was um, my airing of Classical 24 or a World Cafe, or maybe if this was All Things Considered, for example, I would select that from the syndicated dropdown. I would just select the program um, that this is referring to. This is a local program, so I'm just going to leave this as not syndicated. The next thing that I'm asked for is the program and format, um, program format of my program. 
um, if this was a classical program, it would be really important to make sure that I select that so that when I go to add playlist, I'm getting, I'm seeing the template for classical programs. But in this example, this is actually um, an entertainment program, so I'm going to select entertainment. I'm then asked to enter a quick, a short description of my program. I'm going to just put in like the best of today and yesterday, as well as some news. You're then prompted to enter your program link. If you're, if this is, you know, you're creating your program for morning edition or all things considered, something that has um, a, a a program site on NPR.org, for example, you can enter that link here. If you are onboarding to Core Publisher, you're currently using Core Publisher, you would want this to link to the program page that you that exists on your Core Publisher site. I then got space to enter the Twitter and Facebook URLs um, for my program if they exist. And then I've got this airtime section. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, I'm not done on my program details section. Uh, there's space here to configure the metadata display for widgets. So this is for those specific Composer 2 widgets that we're going to talk about later today. So if you want to add album art, label, host, things like that to the widget, you're just going to check those check boxes. And then you have the space here to enter a host. We've got this add a host button here. So let's say that one of my hosts, their name is Bob Jones. I'm going to enter their name here. Uh, and then if I had another host, um, let's call her Sally Jones. They are related. Um, so let's just say, you know, I, got, I have my host here. If for some reason Sally doesn't actually work on this program, I can hit the remove host button to remove her from um, this program. All right, so scrolling up. We've got our airtime section. So airtime is where you're going to be entering when your program airs. Let's say that this program airs Monday through Friday, and it airs from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. I'm then going to select a start date for my program. The start date is the day that this program will start to show up in your grid in Composer 2. Um, let's just say, for example, that this program actually doesn't start until April 1st, and it goes until April 30th. This is a month-long program. Um, so I could choose that. Again, you just click into the box. A little calendar will pop up, and you can choose the date. Um, you could also backdate this. If this program actually started at the beginning of March, I could go and select that as well. I can also choose to give my program no end date. I'm just going to click on this X here to clear that out. So let's say, for example, that my program starts on April 1st, but I don't, I don't intend to stop airing this program. This is a new program that we are planning to add to our lineup. I'm going to leave the end date blank, and you'll see that it says forever. The next option you see is repeats every blank. So it's every week, every other week, every three weeks, up to every 12 weeks. You can select the frequency of your program. And you'll notice here that we've got um, a human readable description of when your program airs. So this program will play every week on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday beginning April 1st, 2016. There is no scheduled end date. If I were to change this to every other week, you notice that it changes. This airtime will play every two weeks. So this just allows you to make sure that you're understanding for sure what you are actually, what you're programming into um, Composer 2. If I want to add a new airtime, for example, if my program airs 1 to 2 Monday through Friday, but Saturdays and Sundays it airs at a different time, I'm going to select Add an Airtime. I'm going to check my two my weekend days, and I'm going to note when this program airs. So let's say that it airs from 3 to 4 p.m. on Friday, on weekends. It's also going to start on April 1st, and it's every week. So I see here that I've got both of my air times. Um, and once I have, you know, taken a look at everything, I've ensured that everything's spelled correctly, I've got all my information, I am going to scroll back up to the top and hit the green save button to save my new program. 
All right. So let's go back into our slides now that we have reviewed how to create a program in Composer 2. So again, to start, you're going to, let's go back a slide, you're going to go to Add Program. It's going to take you to your Add Program page. And to start, you're going to enter the name of the program and select it from the syndicated dropdown if it is a syndicated show. Next, I'm going to select the program format. Always remember that if this is a classical program that you're creating, to make sure to select classical so that you will see more classical specific features in Composer 2 for that program. You're going to then enter your description, which is text only, um, your program page link, and also your social media links where applicable. Remember to click on the Add Host button to, create, to add your hosts. Um, you can have multiple hosts for a program. You can have three or four. Just continue to hit the Add Host button to add your new hosts. Over in the Airtime section, you're going to check the corresponding day or days that your program airs. Enter the time that your program airs um, and also the date that you want your program to start appearing in your Composer 2 guide. And the date's going to always default to today. So whatever today is, that's what it's going to always default. But you can always have your program start in either the past or the future by using that calendar to just, you know, toggle to the correct date. And remember that with your end date, you can choose to leave it blank if your program intends to air forever. But if you have a specific end date for your program, like you know it's only for election season or Christmas or it's only for a month, you're going to enter the end date into the end date field. And if you ever need to add a new airtime, so maybe it airs uh, different times at different days, you're going to click on the add a new airtime button. And then once you've confirmed that everything is all set, you're going to hit the green save button at the top to save your new program. And it'll appear in your grid in the basically the spacing that you put it in, the time space that you assigned for your program. All right. So a quick note about creating overnight programs. So if you have a program that starts, for example, at 11 p.m. on Tuesday and ends at 3 a.m. on Wednesday, you're going to create one airtime that airs Tuesday from 11 to 11.59 p.m. and another airtime that airs on Wednesday from midnight to 3 a.m. And your host will have to also split their playlist into both episodes. So if you have something like Classical 24, you should be all set. This should happen automatically with your playlist. But if you have a, a host who's going to be manually entering that information, you want to make sure that they're aware their program was split into two days. If you ever need to edit information about our program, so the host changes or the airtime changes or the name of the program changes, um, there are two ways to do that. The first would be to go to the programs list by clicking on programs and then find your program in the list um, and select it. Just click on it. The second way and um, to get to a program is to just locate it in your calendar. So if you know, for example, that it airs on um, Sundays at 2 p.m., you can just find that space in your weekly grid and then just click on the name of the program, not the edit episode list. You're going to click specifically on the title of the program. So one of the things that you may need to do in terms of editing would be to um, make changes to your program once it no longer airs. So if you've got a program, it aired for maybe two or three years and now the program is over um, you need to remove it from your grid you're not going to delete the program you're going to just give it an end date so you're going to go in you're going to edit your program and in the end date field you're going to select the last day that that program is going to air so for example let's say that program is going to go until um its last showing will be april 30th then you would give your end date you'd make your end date april 30th for example and we just want to make sure that you guys are really deliberate about doing that because um, there is no option for station users to delete programs in Composer 2. So in Composer 
Pro, there was an option for folks to delete programs. And sometimes um, programs would get deleted erroneously and it will be somewhat difficult to retrieve those playlists. And so to make sure that we could ensure that playlists were um, not orphaned or lost um, for those who were who used to use Composer Pro, I'm sure you remember us using those terms before, um, we decided to remove the functionality to delete programs. So if you ever need to delete a program we suggest just giving it an end date but if you really do need to delete it we suggest just giving just submitting a support ticket or giving um, our support team a call and we can help you with that all right so another aspect of program management are is dealing with your conflicts so a conflict allows you to know that um, two programs are scheduled for the same time. So you remember in Composer Pro, you would see you know, one, one conflict or two conflicts or five conflicts, depending on how many, um, how many levels deep your program went, like how much overlapping there was. Um, in Composer 2, they are displayed somewhat as overlapping programs. There's also a little exclamation point that you'll see that will let you know that you've got overlapping programs. And what you can do is click on the exclamation point and it'll show you which programs are conflicting. And with that, normally there's just a program that needs to be given an end date because maybe it stopped airing and a new program is airing in that space, but the old program was just never ended. All right. So that's creating your um, program guide in Composer 2. Now let's talk about playlists, how to actually manually create a playlist in Composer 2. In Composer Pro, you'll remember that there were three options to add a song to a playlist. You could either add a song manually, you could do search our songs, or you could do a search all songs. Um, in Composer 2, there are two options. You can either add a song manually manually or you can search and add it from iTunes. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so there are two ways to get to that add playlist page. The first is going to be to hover over the episode that you want to add a playlist to. So for example, let's say I want to enter um, a playlist for this midday mix airing. I'm just going to click on the edit episode link, not the name of the program. To add a playlist, I'm going to select edit episode. I can also go to the episodes link up in my admin and it's going to give me a list of all the programs for the day. I can choose which program I want to create a playlist for. All right, let's hop back into our test site so that we can create a playlist together. All right, so let's say that we've got our um, recent episode of the Midday Mix, and I want to add a playlist for this. Again, there are two ways to add a song to a playlist. The first is to search iTunes. The second is to add the song manually. So let's start by searching iTunes. So let's say that I want to add a song um, by the Beatles. So I'm going to type in the Beatles, and I'm going to hit search. And it's going to give me all of the songs that iTunes has in their records for the Beatles, which you can imagine are a lot of songs. So if you can be really specific when you're doing this search, like if you know that what you're really playing is Hey Jude, then you should type that in. So I'm going to, this is the song I'm going to add to my playlist. I've checked to make sure the runtime is correct. This is the right version. It's the right album. I'm just going to hit the plus sign. And when I scroll up, I see that it's added my song. And it's assuming this was the first thing that happened. Like my program air started at 10 a.m. And the first thing that happened was that Hey Jude played. If that's what's true, then I can keep going. Let's also add a few more songs. Let's say we started this program with a block of Beatles songs. As I click to add them, you'll notice that some information is being pulled over. I've got the album art, the title, I've got the band or you know the uh, um, artist, and I've got the album. Any of the information that you would need for sound exchange reporting, it's going to come over from iTunes. 
So let's say that after I added, I had my three songs, my first block of Beatles program of Beatles songs. Now I'm going to take some time as the host to address my audience. I'm going to click the add break button because I'm adding a break in my playlist where no songs were aired. Remember, that's what a break is, a time in the playlist where no songs were aired. I'm going to hit add break. It's going to ask me how long was my break. My, my break was actually five minutes long. So I'm going to hit add. And now I've got this five minute break in here. So let's say that after this, um, we played some songs by the killers. So let's hit search. Let's see what comes up. All right, so let's say that after my five minute break, we played Mr. Brightside by the, by the killers. I'm gonna hit that plus sign and you'll see that um, Composer 2 is doing the math for you automatically. It's calculating when each song starts based on how long the song or break that you know was previous. So we've got the first song at 10, next song at 10, and 10, 7, 11, and then going down, we've got our five minute break and then the next song isn't starting until, until 10, 19. All right. You'll also want to note that Composer 2 is automatically saving this playlist while you're creating it. So if your host is creating this live or maybe you're working on this and then your, your laptop dies or your internet break, uh, shuts down, it's okay. Composer 2 is automatically saving this playlist. But let's create a, let's create a song. Um, let's add a song manually now. Scroll down under all of our... Um, iTunes search results, and you'll see there's an option, can't find your song, add song. So let's click on the add song option. And it's gonna give me the same sort of feels that I would need to add a song. So this is gonna be the best song by the best band. Let's say this was a, someone, like they came into, they're like an indie band, they're not in iTunes yet. And so they came in, they talked, and then we played one of their songs. Their album is called my album, and then I can enter B U L M. Sorry about that, can't spell today. Um, so we can then enter the composer, the label, and it's really important to make sure that you're adding the correct duration for your song. Let's say this is a six minute song, and then you hit add and scroll all the way back up, and it's going to enter my song. Um, you'll notice that because this song was not pulled from iTunes, it doesn't have any album art. Um, so there's no there's no image, but I'm just going to get this black uh, record here. For all of the songs you add manually, this is what you're going to see. If I ever need to edit this song, I can do so here. Same thing with any of the songs that I pulled from iTunes. If maybe I didn't play the full three minutes and 41 seconds, I only played the first two minutes, I can change that there. Um, there's also this option to add a field. I can add custom fields. So, for example, I could create a notes field and I could say, you know, um, sorry, notes. And I could say, you know, uh, today is Brandon Flowers' birthday. So, you know, Brandon Flowers, Lee Singer, The Killers. If I wanted to note that, maybe that was a note for the for the song, I could add that as well. You can add multiple custom fields in Composer 2 to your songs and your playlist. Make sure to save my changes. All right, so that is creating a playlist in Composer 2. Let's go back into our slides and finish up. All right, so again, as a reminder, you're going to um, go to your episode details or add playlist page in order to create a new playlist. To add a song from iTunes, you're gonna just put the song in or the artist in and hit save, I mean, I'm sorry, hit search. And it's gonna give you all of the, all of the, um, options for that song that exists in iTunes based on what you type into the search field, that's what's going to show up. Um, and so you're going to hit the add button or the plus sign for the entry that best matches the song that you're playing. And you're going to get the album art, the song name, you're going to get the artist, you're going to get all of that metadata that you need as well as how long the song was. 
if you have a classical program um, and you need to do a classical music search, you can select archive and do an archive search, which you see gives you a lot more to search from. We, we just recognize that with classical music, um, there are a lot more a lot more specific things that you are adding to your playlist. And so that was why we gave that option. If you can't find your song, though, in either iTunes or Archive, you can always select Add Song to fill out information about your song and hit the Add button. Remember that if you selected Classical from the dropdown when you created your type of program, you're going to see more options there for adding a song. And then always remember that if no music is being played, so you're either doing underwriting spot or you're promoting your pledge drive or your host is just, you know, talking or doing an interview, you're going to select the add break button and then enter the duration of the break and then hit the green add button. If you ever need to edit or delete a song, you're going to select the edit link here. It's always going to be under the time. And then whatever you decide to do, make changes, um, add a field, you're always going to hit the save button afterwards to save your changes. The edits are the only thing that's not auto-saving. And you can add up to three custom fields per song. And if you ever want to see how much of your program's airtime is filled with your playlist that includes your breaks as well, you can always go back to the episodes page and you're going to see a status bar that indicates how complete that playlist is. All right. So the next thing that we're going to tackle is importing and exporting your playlist. So if you um, are using a tool like Spinatron or, or Music Master and you are creating your song list there and you want to then import them into Composer 2, you can do so. Just make sure they're a .csv file um, to import a program. I'm sorry, .csv or .txt. To start, you're going to go to the episode that you want to add a playlist for in the same way that you would do if you were going to add enter your playlist manually. But instead of starting to enter your songs, you're going to go to playlist options and select import CSV. And then you're going to see a button that says download a sample file here. You want to make sure to download that file. Um, it'll make things a lot easier for you and your host if you download the file, which provides a template of, the, of you know, what format we want the information in to import into Composer 2. So you're going to download the sample file, fill it in with your playlist, share it with your host. They can fill in their playlist as well. And then when you're ready to import, you're going to select Choose File to Upload Your um, Playlist. Once your import is complete, you're going to see um, review notes. So you're going to see like a green OK All Set, or you're going to see like a red message that gives you, you know, some insight into why your playlist did not import. Um, there are also tips and tricks to help you to make sure that um, your playlist is in the right format. But again, I definitely recommend starting with that sample file to make sure that you've got all of your headings correct and then taking a look at the troubleshooting tips. You can also export your playlist for sound exchange and other reporting needs to do so. Um, you're just going to go to that episode again and under playlist options, you're going to select export playlists. Just a little bit different. You can also um, clear your playlist and also have access to share your playlist via an iframe. So if you have like a blog for your program and you want to put the playlist for that day as an iframe in the blog post, you can do so by selecting share playlist. And there's also clear playlist if, for example, you started working on a playlist and then realized it was for the wrong day or something like that. All right, so the final thing I wanted to cover today is displaying Composer 2 content on your site. So you'll remember that if you were using Composer Pro, um, you had your now playing daily and weekly schedules and playlists, but they were static layouts that you had to basically like link to on your current site navigation. Sorry. 
In Composer 2, we made things a little different. We, um, instead of using those static embed pages, those static pages you had to link to, we decided to instead go with widgets that were more flexible and customizable. And you will have widgets for now playing, daily and weekly schedules, playlist, and also song grid. So there are two ways to implement Composer 2 on your website. And note, this is for stations that are not using Composer 2. If you are, I'm sorry, Core Publisher. If you're using Core Publisher, you won't have to worry about this, um, embedding it through a widget. But if you are not using Core Publisher as your content management system, then you will need to use either the low effort, which is recommended, and that involves copying and pasting the widgets. And then the second, which is the more medium effort, involves um, customizable JavaScript code. So the first is the Composer Pro um, versus Composer 2 for the daily widget. So remember again that with the daily widget in Composer Pro, it lived on a separate page of your site. Um, in Composer 2, it is a widget. And if you click on the playlist link, it collapses with a full playlist for that um, episode in the widget. So you don't have to search on like an external page to then see all of the songs. You can see all of that song list information in the widget. With the weekly grid, you'll remember in Composer Pro that, again, it lived on a separate page outside of your site. In Composer 2, again, it is an embeddable widget that can be added to any page of your site. So to access all of your widgets, you're going to go to widgets in your top um, admin bar. And you see you've got your options now playing, daily schedule, weekly schedule, song list, and song grid. When you click on one of these options, it's going to immediately show you what the widget will look like. And over here to the far right, this is where you're going to see all of your configuration options. So if you want to change the height of the widget, if you want to change the width, you can do so in the code. Um, we suggest keeping them somewhat like what the code already is, because right now they are responsive. So they should resize depending on the size of your screen. There's also a, also a playlist widget. You remember in Composer Pro, again, that was a page that lived off of your site. Um, and it was not always easy to get to to manage the, um, the song list page versus other Composer Pro pages. But that is just a searchable song list widget now in Composer 2. And there's also the now playing widget. So this was somewhat of a widget in Composer Pro. In Composer 2, it is highly customizable. It can really seamlessly fit into your web page design. Um, so we definitely recommend taking a look at that. It's mean to put into your, your, your right margin or your home page. And again, that's what that you're going to get to that by going to now playing on the widget builder page. And then the last widget that we have access to is that you have access to is the song grid. So this is a whole new widget for Composer 2. Um, it basically allows you to um, it automatically pulls in some of the album art if you are adding songs that are from um, iTunes. And it creates a really visual look of basically what your program is. Like someone can come to your example, your program blog, and see this song grid widget, they'll be able to get a pretty good idea visually of what sort of program, what sort of music you air at your program based on the album art. All right, so the last thing that we want to cover is the integration with Core Publisher. So if you're a Core Publisher station, again, you're not going to worry about those widgets that we just referred to because Composer 2 is automatically pulled in and displayed in four places on your Core Publisher site. The first is in the Persistent Player if you're using it. If you're using the Persistent Player, the Now Playing and the song information, like the song that's now playing, are going to display in the player. You also have your slash schedule page where your daily and your weekly grids are going to show up. That's pulling directly from Composer 2 as well. And then also on your program pages, you're going to have like a song list or a playlist widget for each of your programs um, on your program pages in Core Publisher. All right, so that is all we've got for you. Um, 
It's basically an overview of Composer 2. Um, it's your homework to get lined up with Composer 2. The first is to log in and create users for your hosts and staff. Next, you want to look over your current grid in Composer 2 and make sure that your schedule and program listings are correct and if not, make any necessary updates. The next is going to be to if you want to, optional completely, if you want to, you can import playlists from Composer Pro into Composer 2 to create an archive of sorts. And we don't recommend, we recommend, you know, doing maybe about a week worth of, uh, of playlists from Composer Pro into Composer 2. And then also plan to start double posting your playlist into both Composer 2 and whatever your current playlist management is tool, at least for a couple of days or a week so that your hosts can become accustomed to the new workflow. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for today's webinar. Again, my name is Rakesha Chase Jackson, and we just reviewed um, using the Composer 2 playlist management tool. Um, have a great rest of your day.